The January 6th committee revealed a series of depositions today from former aides to President Trump, who said he was watching TV as the insurrection unfolded. Meanwhile, the Secret Service has mysteriously deleted text messages from the day of the coup attempt, despite requests from Congress to preserve all records related to January 6th. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. The January 6th committee was back in primetime tonight, which means we don't know what happened because we taped this before the hearing. Although, given how shocking the previous hearings have been, I'm not taking anything off the table. Maybe you're watching this right now thinking, oh my God, I can't believe Trump tried to commandeer Air Force One so we could fly to the Capitol, but then got lost and crashed in the Atlantic Ocean where he was adrift at sea for several weeks and befriended a volleyball he named Mike Pence. <laughs> In fairness, if you saw volleyball, you could definitely be forgiven for thinking it was Mike Pence. <laughs> or maybe you're sitting at home right now thinking, I can't believe Rudy Giuliani. Actually, you know what? Uh, never mind. Shame on all of us if we're ever surprised again by anything Rudy does from this point forward. I mean, he already leaked hair dye on national television and posted a video on Twitter with his shorts down to his ankles, <laughs> swinging a golf club back and forth like the world hypnotist. You're getting very sleepy and so am I. Good thing I'm already wearing my pajama shorts. So as we're taping this, we don't know exactly what happened, but the committee did release an early teaser today, a series of deposition with former Trump aides who all testified that as the seat of our government was under attack by a violent mob, Trump himself incited as part of a carefully orchestrated plot to overthrow American democracy. Trump was doing one thing and one thing only, sitting in the White House dining room watching TV. Was the president in that private dining room the whole time that the attack on the Capitol was going on? Or did he ever go, to, again, only to your knowledge, to the Oval Office, to the White House Situation Room, anywhere else? So that's my recollection. He was always in the dining room. Okay. Yeah, did, what did they say, Mr. Meadows or the president? At all, during that brief encounter that you were in the dining room? What do you recall? I think they were, I really was watching the TV. Do you know whether he was watching TV in the dining room when uh, you talked to him on January 6th? Um, it's my understanding he was watching television. When you were in the dining room in these discussions, was the on, was the, the violence capital visible on the screen on the, on the television? Yes. All right. You got to give it to Donald Trump. He was somehow both the most dangerous and also the laziest president in American history. Donald Trump in the dining room with the television is the answer to every mystery in a game of Trump Clue. I mean, seriously, they're all talking about the President of the United States the way exhausted parents talk about a toddler who needs some chill out time. He's in the dining room watching Bluey. I think we should just leave him alone. Bluey, we love Bluey, don't we, folks? We love him. We love Bluey, we love Bluey's antics, and let me tell you, if you love her, you have to go to Australia because they all talk like Bluey. <laughs> but those depositions are all consistent with what we already knew. Trump was gleefully watching the violence unfold on TV and enjoying it. He was cheering them on like he was watching Sunday Night Football. I'm shocked we don't have a photo of him in the Oval Office wearing a hat, a foam finger, and a jersey that says Team Insurrection. Now, that... <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you can see the Photoshop, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> sometimes, I, sometimes I feel like the audience at home is like, whoa, did that really happen? And sometimes they're like, oh, well, that's a Photoshop. <laughs> Look, this stuff's all happening in real time. Our graphics team doesn't have like 24 hours to get ready. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna try to see it with new eyes. Can we put it up again real quick, Alex? All right, here we go. When he did that, though, Trump was like, you guys better not Photoshop anything on me later. I know I'm doing a very friendly Photoshop pose. I don't, no, no putting any silly shirts on me. Now that's the testimony that was released before the hearing. Going into the hearing, we also had an idea of who might testify in person and specifically what they would testify about. As we all know by now, Trump sicked a mob of armed riders on the Capitol, riders he knew were armed, and he was essentially cheering them on as they tried to find and kill Mike Pence. In fact, he even tweeted angrily at Pence as the mob was moving through 
the Capitol looking for Pence, providing further fuel to the insurrection. And today we found out more about what was going on behind the scenes as that happened. The witnesses are former Deputy National Security Advisor Matt Pottinger and former Deputy White House Press Secretary Sarah Matthews, both of whom resigned on January 6th. Sources say Pottinger is expected to paint a picture of chaos in the West Wing punctuated by the president's tweet attacking Pence. That's where I knew that I was leaving that day uh, once I read that tweet. Matthews is expected to testify how alarmed she was that Trump refused to quickly call off the mob after the violence erupted. We thought that the president needed to tweet something and tweet something immediately. I'm always amazed by these people who thought they were working for a normal president right up until January 6th. It must be super easy to throw surprise parties for these people. I mean, they could even help plan it, and yet when everybody yells surprise, they would probably wet their pants. <laughs> but I do think it's worth taking a step back to appreciate what those witnesses said in that clip. Everyone around Trump, including, as we now know, GOP members of Congress, Fox News hosts, and even his own family were begging him to call off the mob he instructed to march down to the Capitol, a mob Trump knew was violent and armed, and Trump refused. In fact, he did the opposite. He sent out a tweet attacking Pence as the mob was breaching the Capitol, a tweet some of the mob took as a show of support for what they were doing. And then, when his aides told him the mob was chanting, hang Mike Pence, Trump said, maybe he should be hanged. I mean, what else do you need? If this was an episode of Law & Order, that would be the part where McCoy stepped back from the witness and said, I have nothing further, and then it would just fade to black. And then there'd be that little final scene in the office where they're going out for drinks and Schiff puts on his little weird hat. No, you watch too much Law & Order. <laughs> so much crazy <laughs> has happened that it's easy to forget the details of any specific Trump scandal, but I really hope that particular sequence of events is seared in history forever. Normally, our history textbooks all have boring names like Modern America, 1950 to the present, but when they get around to writing a book about this, they should just call it, the dude tried to get his own vice president killed. I mean, what the f <laughs> So that's the preview we got going into tonight's hearing, but there's also another aspect to this story that we were hoping to hear more about, and that's what the Secret Service was up to. The committee tried to get information from the Secret Service, but mysteriously, almost all the text messages from that day seem to have vanished. The Secret Service says it cannot recover the deleted text messages from January 5th and 6th of last year. The Washington Post is reporting the agency has no new text to provide to Congress and that any other messages exchanged between agents around the time of the attack were purged. I'm sorry, what? You just deleted all your texts from one of the most pivotal days in American history? I really don't want to read too much into this, but it's hard not to. I mean, it's suspicious when someone's browser history is full of porn, but it's way more suspicious when their browser history has just been cleared. No, I, uh, I, uh, I don't really use the internet, I guess, yeah. How is it possible that we still have handwritten letters Alexander Hamilton wrote by candlelight on parchment 250 years ago, but text messages sent by one of the most technologically advanced law enforcement agencies in the world from last year have magically disappeared. Even if I delete a spam email from my phone, it still exists in like nine different places, including my iCloud for some reason, even though I have repeatedly called Apple customer service and asked them to please stop saving all those emails offering me free boner pills. Because I've said it once, I've said it a hundred times, the free ones don't work. <laughs> Sorry, fellas, but them's the facts. You gotta spend a little money if you want results. <laughs> and there are lots of reasons why we'd wanna know what the Secret Service was talking about on that day. For one, we already know that before January 6th, Pence's chief of staff warned the Secret Service that Trump was putting Pence in danger. Then as the attack was happening, Pence's agents tried to rush him away from the Capitol and Pence told them, I'm not getting in that car. And then of course, there's this insane story relayed by Cassidy Hutchinson of Trump demanding that his agents take him in his presidential vehicle to the Capitol to join the mob in overthrowing the election. And when they refused, Hutchinson claims, Trump tried to grab the steering wheel himself and then lunged at one of the agents. Now, Trump loyalists have since disputed that story through anonymous intermediaries, but that's all the more reason why we need to see the Secret Service text messages from that day, because even if that story is a little bit true, I would love to see what those agents were texting to each other about it. Agent Stevens, what happened in the car? POTUS tried to grab the wheel. And then what happened? I hit him with a tranquilizer dart. 
Did he fall asleep? No, it only made him angrier. <laughs> Did you try distracting him with a chicken nugget? That usually works. We activated the emergency nugget protocol, but it had no effect. Backup nugget also failed. Did POTUS gain control of vehicle? Yes. Did he drive to Capitol? No. He forgot what he was doing and took us to Wendy's drive through ordered a Frosty, chugged it real fast, then got super bad ice cream headache. Did that calm him down? Nope. Tried to choke me again. We told him Kim Kardashian was on the phone and wanted to talk to him, and that seemed to distract him. Was it really her? No. Nope. One of the agents pretended. He did her voice and was like, hi, this is Kim. I'm such a huge fan. POTUS totally bought it. On our way back to the White House, activate third nugget protocol. This scandal is so bad that Department of Homeland Security has now reportedly launched a criminal investigation into the destruction of the text messages. The Secret Service played a key role in the events of that day, and they presumably witnessed everything Trump was doing, from watching television, to watching television, to... Watching television. This has been A Closer Look. God's Love We Deliver cooks and brings over two million meals a year to men, women, and children living with HIV, AIDS, cancer, and other serious illnesses, and they need your help. Now more than ever, if you're watching this online, you can hit the donate button, stay safe, get vaccinated. We love you.